Hello everyone, my name is Anton and in this video I want to get into Obsidian Mobile. Just going to do a simple walkthrough, not going to go through all of the settings and everything within there, but let's give a general walkthrough of Obsidian Mobile. There's a bunch of videos out there showing the desktop application. So yeah, I thought this, this video is something that's needed right now. Okay, so right now I'm using version 1.6.1. It's uh, currently an insider version. And if you want to get to that, you will need to go into test flight. So let's open up test flight and let's go into the Obsidian here. Um, so again, if you're on iOS, this is how you will get the early releases. And if you don't want to use the early release, you don't have to for everything I'm showing you here. Um, you can go to the, the app store to download this app. If you're on Android, you just need to, if you want the early release, get the APK, or you can go to the Google Play Store on Android to get Obsidian from there. Pretty easy. Now, this here is a lab setup for Obsidian. So the only plugin that I have installed on here is a Skeledraw. And it's really because it, it though the Skeledraw and Obsidian are two things I think that you must have in your arsenal when you're using Obsidian. Uh, one to do visual note note taking and uh, whiteboarding and Obsidian for your, you know, your, just your basic note taking. You, I will go into the canvas on Obsidian as well, um, but a scale draw can go way beyond what the canvas can do so i want to show both of those first let's get into some of the mobile specific settings that differ from the desktop so if we go ahead and we swipe over and go into the settings up here and one of the differences you're going to notice right off the bat is you have this toolbar um, addition in the settings where you don't have this on the desktop side and within the within this toolbar settings you can configure the toolbar kind of obvious and it gives you a lot of functionality that right out of the box so when you're on your 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 tablet device or your mobile phone you can quickly do some quick actions from the toolbar and you can really you can set this up and configure it however you want that's one of the the biggest pros and probably one of the cons of obsidian is that it's very customizable so get in there customize that toolbar the way you want it and yeah it, it'll in, increase your efficiency when you're on your mobile device i like to add the the time and the date on onto the toolbar and have those at the first items on that toolbar so i can quickly add a time or quickly add a date from there but again this is your personal preference you can go in here set them up, you can uh, or order them however you want to. Now, another thing in here is the quick actions where you can come in here and you configure a quick action for when you swipe down on the, um, on the screen of the mobile device. So Obsidian is uh, touch enabled and it works very well with touch on mobile devices. So this is one of those quick actions where if you swipe down, it will do something quick for you. And there's a long laundry list of things that you can configure this quick action to do. The next thing within here in the settings is going to be for override. Now, with Obsidian and Obsidian Mobile, you may want to have different configurations. I would suggest it after maybe you played around with Obsidian, having both of them set up and syncing, and you find out what works and what doesn't work, because not all plugins will work on desktop and mobile the same way. Some are just will not work at all, and they will be disabled automatically. Others will work, but the way that they work might not be as great as it is on desktop. And one of those is the, at this, point in time the advanced uh, canvas I have noticed on mobile device when I'm using the advanced canvas plugin and I'm trying to do something within the canvas it gets very jerky so 
I have that disabled on my mobile device, but on the desktop, it works fine. So in here, if you want to override the settings so that you have different settings on your mobile and different things, you know, set up on your desktop, just come in here to the this bottom uh, configuration override configuration folder and you can just come in here and you can right now it's set up for the default which is dot obsidian what you can do is come in here and create a dot obsidian dash mobile so if i was to do that here obsidian and maybe we just do dash mobile and it will prompt you to relaunch this and when you relaunch it it's basically going to start as a clean vanilla um, setup where you're going to have to configure everything that you want to configure for this particular uh, setting to be enabled. And once that is enabled, then you'll, you know, when you're syncing your folders, your, your actual vault, you don't have to worry about doing something on the desktop from a setting standpoint and affecting the settings on your mobile. Okay, so we're at the main screen here now, and you get an empty tab that's set up. Um, one of the things that you, when you're creating your notes, they are created in tabs within Obsidian. So if we just go ahead and click on this one, it creates the actual note. It titles it with Untitled. You can easily go ahead and, and change this here, and then you can get into your note, and you can start typing whatever you want in here. Pretty simple. As you see at the bottom here, the toolbar is shown. As I mentioned in the settings, you can configure that to be whatever you want. And on the side here, if we go ahead and swipe over, you on the left side pane, you get access to the settings. You can pin that sidebar or leave it as unpinned. We have the tabs where you can change whatever widgets that you have set up. By default here, we have file search tags and bookmarks. If we go to file, then you have the file tree that shows here where you can navigate through your files and folders. Also at the top, you can change what vault that you have and you can create a new vault from there. So if you wanna just switch back and forth from one vault to another, that's pretty easy. This is the vault that I typically work in day to day. And I can just switch that over for doing this particular video. It switches very fast. There's no issues here. Also, if you want to manage your vault, we can go ahead and just click in there. You can create a new vault or you can set up anything else re vault related from within this screen. Now, if you want to get back to the vault that you're in or change another vault, Basically, you just select it and enter and go back into that vault. And then at the bottom here of this left tab, we have different buttons here. One is to create a new note. One is to create a new folder. The other is to change the sort order. And the other is to expand the folder, the folder tree here. Now on the side pane, you get all the different buttons that you know, additional plugins might bring in there or any core plugins that you might have. So you can either go in here and do, do the quick switcher. You have the graph view, um, create a canvas, the set up a to do note, insert a template, command palette. And here I have the Excala draw plugin installed. So that option is also set up here for me to use. Now let's go to the right side. If we go to the right side, we have a similar setup as what's on the left, except you have different widgets over here and you don't have the settings and the vault stuff um, on this side. So it's a bit more simplified where you can come in here and you can set up your, your widgets or change the widget that you have set up here. And this is, uh, yeah, it's, Pretty simple, there's nothing, really nothing to it. At the bottom, you can you have search, uh, so you can sh show the search filter, and you can also collapse. We change these to um, outgoing links. You see that the actual buttons at the bottom changes. 
So the bottom buttons are specific to whatever widget that you set up or um, you select on these panels. Now, one difference uh, that you will see from the desktop and from the um, mobile version here is that on these panels, when you, when you select your widget, you can only do one of those at a time. Um, also, the settings window in this vault configuration setting is different on desktop. So if we were to take a look at the, the desktop application here, we can see on the right bottom is where you see the actual settings button and where you can change the vault. You, at the top here, you have um, the, the actual widgets where you can change what those look like on the top. You can also notice that on the desktop side, you can actually stack these things. You can resize them and have multiple widgets shown at the same time, where on the desktop, this is not um, something that you can do. You can only have one of those selected at a time, as we've shown here. One other thing that you do get on the this right side tab, well, I'll have to show that on my vault is that on the right side, if you have Obsidian Sync, you will get an icon that shows that up here. So this icon, if you click on it, it is actually functional. You can get some options on whether you wanna pause the sync, see the version, look at the activity log, uh, see what files have been deleted in some other setting, get to the settings for the sync plugin there. We'll go back to the lab here. Okay, so right now we went through some of the different um, elements of the, the UI for Obsidian and some of the configurations. Now let's just get in here and start seeing what we can do from the notes perspective. So notes are simple. Just go in here, you can start typing. They're marked down enabled. Um, I should not, I don't think I need to go into details on what an actual note will look like once you start leveraging Markdown. If you use Obsidian on a desktop, it works the same. These are just regular text notes that, that support Markdown. Um, depending on what plugins you have, things may look a little different, but out of the box, this is what you get. You also, on the right side here, you can come in here and you can change what the view mode is, whether it's you, you edit or it's just read. And then you have these three dots where you get other options for that note and, and things that you can do to the note. Some of these will change depending on the plugins you have installed, but this is what you get out of the box. Now let's open up a couple more tabs and create a couple more notes here because one th one let's get, talk about windowing on here one thing with ipad is that you can open up multiple windows for certain apps and you can have things working side by side um, one of the challenges and I, I guess i won't call it a challenge but one of the things that's not supported with obsidian at this time on mobile is to have multiple instances of the same app running and usually you're only going to do that because you want to get windows, multiple windows open side by side so that you can work on those windows um, and kind of in tandem, go back and forth really quick. But with Obsidian, you have this tab and windowing uh, functionality built into it to where you can customize the Obsidian workspace um, the way you want it. So you don't need to leverage iOS's or iPad OS's windowing functionality. So if I come in here and I want to take a, a window and I want to move it to the side, I can easily come in here and drag and drop that where I want it to. If I want to take another window and then move it here to the bottom, I can do that as well. So we can see just how flexible the windowing system is within Obsidian by leveraging these tags, uh, these tabs, and being able to move things around versus 
just leveraging what comes with iOS, which is a bit more limiting in my opinion. Now let's take a look at the canvas. So if we come over here and we let's open up a new canvas, we when we open up that new canvas, it does pretty much like it does when you open up a new note. It highlights the name of the actual canvas or the file itself. And you can change that really quick. And then you can get into the actual um, file itself and start doing whatever you want. Now, there is some support for the mouse on the, the canvas side here as well, where you can double click and I can put in a card. I can also come in here and you have this, this menu at the bottom where you can put in a new card. Um, or we can come in here, if we hover over this one here, you can see where we can add to drag note from a vault. So if I click on that, it shows me some of the, um, the notes that I have within my vault, if I want to add those in there. So that's one thing you can do as well. Now, one thing I saw that I, I noticed that does not work well is that the mouse, you cannot select, say, the actual object, click it, and then move it around. Or you can't even resize any of the objects using the mouse on iOS. This is probably something that can easily be fixed within software from the Obsidian dev team. But right now it is not supported. Um, oh, actually, so mistaken here. If you so select this in the right place, it seems that it actually does work. But as we've just shown there, we just saw that I was able to do it, uh, but it is a bit finicky. So in my opinion, working with the canvas and working with these different shapes, it's better to just use your finger and, and manipulate things and move things around because you can easily come in here and grab and move those around where you notice with the trying to use the trackpad and the mouse things um, somewhat work or just didn't work out right right off the bat so here you can see again i'm trying that functionality and it's not working well now if you want to select an object and move it around you do have to press and hold it until you get that little burst uh, image that comes out there the animated burst do it here again, kind of see that color burst out. Then you can actually move this thing around and put place these wherever you want to. You can come in here and double tap does not work for creating new um, cards on the canvas using your finger, even, even though it does work using the cursor here in the mouse. If you press and hold, you can get the the menu here and you can add this way if you want to so you have plenty of options on how you can do this if you want to select one and then drag an arrow out of it here if you pick the right little place on there sometimes it gets a little tricky but yeah it's it's not too bad here put that there you can also come in here and you can double tap on the object to give it the cursor. So I can go in here and type some stuff in here. And these cards do support markdown. I'm not really going into what the, the, the cards actually support. If you use, again, Obsidian on mobile, the same support works here. Um, one other good thing here is that you can use apps side by side. And if you want to drag in images here, you can still do that. So that makes it makes it very convenient for getting any images that you might have on your mobile device into here or any files and, and things like that that's supported on the canvas. So you can still select it. You can move things around. You can drag arrows around. Yeah, change, change the colors. So all that stuff still works on here. So let's take a look at 
Excala draw now as one of our last features that we're going to get into. So Excala draw, as I mentioned, is one of those um, plugins that I think are essential if you're using Obsidian, whether it's on desktop or mobile, uh, just because it gives you a really um, capable visual note taking experience that is full of features. So there's a lot you can do with it. Not that you that you have to use everything that you can do within a scale draw, but there's there's a lot of functionality. So I think it's one of those necessary plugins that you should have installed if you're using Obsidian. Now, just like with the canvas, I can come in here and I can I can drag in images onto the canvas. So we saw that looks pretty good. I can resize those. So I come in and I take that one there, come in, they look really nice. I can come in here and I can put shapes onto the board, on the, on the whiteboard here. So all of this stuff works pretty well. If I want to use the arrows, I can come in and put arrows and, and move these arrows to things. One thing I don't like is that you can see on that toolbar where if I select the arrow tool, I use the arrow tool. Then once I let it go, it goes back to the to the actual cursor where you can select objects using this cursor. Um, I wish it would be a little bit sticky and there may be a setting for this somewhere that I just haven't found. Um, but that's one thing that I have noticed that when you select some of those objects on the on the toolbar, they, they're not sticky. They, they it will revert back to this cursor. Now you can come in here, you can use your finger to do a selection of, of one or more objects. You can move these objects around, you can resize them. All the same things that you can do within Excalibur, you can pretty much do here. The one big difference that you get on uh, your mobile tablet device, if it has input support, is that you can take your, your pencil and you can draw on the screen so and this is pretty fluid i've never seen any performance issues or slowdowns with this here this works very well you can come into the settings and you can change you know the thickness or even the color of what the ink will look like so all that works and with Excalibur, Draw, there's even functionality where you can download certain scripts that will do OCR on any of the text that might be on your or written text or text and images um, within your whiteboard and put that into the actual uh, work, your whiteboard here so that you can work with it or do just do searches text searches within Obsidian to find things that might be in these these uh, these Excala draw whiteboards. Okay, so quick summary, we went into looking at how do we get the the early releases and from test flight, we looked at some of the mobile specific settings from the toolbar, the quick command and actually overriding some of the settings so that you have different settings from desktop to mobile. Um, we did a cursory look at all the different stuff you can do with on, uh, within Obsidian on the mobile device. That's pretty much similar to what you get on the desktop with tabs, with windowing. Um, you have Obsidian Sync where you can sync everything on here. Uh, you can leverage the Canvas feature out of the box. You can install and you leverage Excaladraw and use some of the advantages of your tablet and your input devices. And yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. If you have any questions or anything you want to see, let me know in the comment section. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And until the next time, have a nice day.